We drive cars every day, but few of us ever take time to wonder to ourselves, what are cars made out of? Though on the face of it, the question sounds like the naive query of a child, there is actually a lot to be learned by understanding what materials car companies use in the manufacture of today's automobiles. On our heavily interconnected planet, the substances that cars are made of can make a big difference in how efficient they are and the footprints they leave. Some materials are relatively abundant, easy to obtain, and simple to form, while others are rare and require a great deal of energy during their manufacture. Finding the right combination of materials that will result in a safe, fuel-efficient, good-looking personal transport device is both an art and a science. By simply examining a car inside and out, even the least observant among us can determine that a vehicle is made of a lot of different stuff. There is shiny stuff, soft stuff, hard stuff, and transparent stuff to sum things up in an unsophisticated way. But let's get a little more specific about what cars are made of and what those materials contribute to each vehicle that they're a part of. Metals By weight, various metals comprise the vast majority of the typical car. According to Science Daily, a metal is an element or alloy of elements that steadily form positive ions and has metallic bonds. Metals tend to have similar properties, including lustrous, ductile, malleable, and good electricity conductors. At the same time, nonmetals are generally brittle, lackluster, and insulators rather than conductors of electricity. Steel is the most common material in the typical car, as it has been for almost 100 years. Strong and relatively inexpensive, steel is an alloy of iron and carbon containing less than 2% carbon and 1% manganese and small amounts of silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, and oxygen. In addition to its use in automobiles, steel is the world's most important engineering and construction material. It is used in everything from buildings to home appliances to ships to surgical tools. Virtually every car on the road is formed primarily of steel, including its chassis and body. Steel finds heavy use in vehicle manufacturing because it is relatively inexpensive and easy to form by tools like stamping presses. Beyond vehicle bodies and chassis, automakers also use steel in suspension components, exhaust parts, wheels, electric motors, and engines. Aluminum is a fast-growing rival of steel in vehicle manufacture, and its use as an auto body material has grown significantly over the past decade. Aluminum is an element, and it is lighter than steel and, by weight, stronger as well. The material's lightweight characteristics have made it popular with auto engineers who seek to remove mass from cars for fuel economy and emissions reasons. Ten years ago, aluminum was only used in exotic and luxury cars, but now many mainstream cars have aluminum hoods, doors, and trunk lids. Aluminum is also gaining favor as an engine block material, taking cast iron in many vehicles. Copper is a shiny, reddish element that is not only one of the most used metals in consumer products today, but it is also believed to be the first metal worked by humans, who formed it into a variety of tools and decorations tens of thousands of years ago. The U.S. Geological Survey ranks copper as the third most industrial metal globally, and the reason for its current popularity is its exceptional ability to conduct electricity. Because of that, the copper used in automobiles is primarily in its electrical wiring and electric motors. Other metals used in vehicle construction are lead, primarily in lead-acid batteries, and platinum, palladium, and rhodium, rare and expensive metals used in catalytic converters. Magnesium and titanium, two other metals that are typically very strong for their weight, also find their way into some cars, mostly expensive, high-performance vehicles. Plastics As with aluminum, the never-fading drive for increased fuel economy has given plastics a boost as a component of today's vehicles. The term plastics is often used as if it's one material, but plastics are actually a broad range of synthetic or semi-synthetic materials used in a seemingly ever-expanding range of applications. Plastics used in automobiles are typically produced from natural products such as cellulose, coal, natural gas, salt, and crude oil. The fuel tanks in many of today's vehicles are made of plastic, as are the body and trim pieces seen on virtually every car's exterior. Inside the typical automobile, plastics are used even more extensively. Plastics make up nearly all the soft and hard trim pieces in the average car. 
Typically, a car's dashboard, instruments, infotainment displays, seat padding, armrests, and consoles are all made of plastics of one type or another. Leather seating surfaces are often plastic coated for added durability. Advances in plastic technology have also enabled vehicle engineers to specify plastic components in engines and drivetrains, parts that previously would have been made of metal. Rubber When you look at any car, it is evident that the all-important tires are made of rubber, so that material must be on the list when you catalog what cars are made out of. But in reality, saying tires are made of rubber is too simple an explanation. According to Michelin, over 200 ingredients go into a tire, all playing vital roles in safety, fuel efficiency, performance, and eco-friendliness. Despite what you might think, the tread layers are not synthetic rubber, but are still formed of natural rubber. While synthetic rubber is used to strengthen the tread and provide added wear, carbon black and silica are also used in tire construction to aid durability, while metal and textile reinforcement cables form the skeleton of the tire, giving it shape and providing rigidity. Often, other chemical agents are added to provide tires unique properties, like less rolling resistance or better grip. But what about high-performance cars? Does any other material go into them, turning them into a ridiculous fast machine? You have probably seen it, the distinctive black pattern on high-performance cars. All high-performance race cars spot the black carbon fiber pattern that is a hallmark of performance. But have you ever asked yourself why auto racing uses carbon fiber parts? In the high-performance environment of auto racing, a carbon fiber car can mean the difference between winning and losing. To understand why auto racers prefer carbon fiber car parts, we first have to get into the mindset of auto racers. Everything an auto racer does is geared towards achieving one thing, speed. Speed wins trophies and trophies validate auto racers. The driver does half of the job in achieving speed, the car does the other half. And this is where carbon fiber parts come in. Weight to power ratio. The ideal car that is able to achieve speed and win auto races is lightweight but powerful. A light and powerful car enables auto racing mechanics to make the car nimble enough to go quickly through corners. Light and powerful cars can also obliterate the competition in a straight line. Steel is often adequate for meeting the weight and power needs of auto races, but in a race where everyone is using the same materials, carbon fiber parts provide the extra edge needed to get more performance out of a car. To achieve speed, cars need a big engine. Big engines tend to be very heavy, which can be counterintuitive to speed. The weight of the engine combined with other parts can make a car very heavy. It is possible to fit a car with enough horsepower to counter its weight, but this ends up creating a car that is only good for going fast on straight lines but is terrible at navigating corners. The ideal situation in auto racing is a vehicle that is lightweight but still powerful. A light and powerful car is not only fast but can quickly navigate corners without the drivers losing control of their vehicles going belly up. Thus, auto races need power, but do not need the added weight that comes with adding power through heavier parts. This is where carbon fiber comes in.